Hi, I'm Ed Hughes, the Product Manager for SAS Contextual Analysis. Let's take a quick look at some of the ways in which SAS Contextual Analysis can help you filter, explore, and categorize unstructured textual data, collections of documents. This web-based solution combines machine learning and linguistically-based methods and also lets you add your own domain expertise. This means you can get a quick start on the analysis and still tailor it as needed to suit the data at hand. Once you've built a model, you can deploy it elsewhere in SAS to classify related collections of documents. Let's look at a project I've built based on data gathered by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration in 2008, covering reported defects associated with different types of vehicles. There are just over 38,000 reports in total, including, unfortunately, many in which the vehicle defect resulted in expensive repairs or even serious accidents. This is the properties screen summarizing the project. The analysis begins by accessing the data source, establishing the concepts, identifying terms, and discovering topics, all done automatically. Then the text analyst determines and designates which topics should be used as categories. Looking at the terms screen, over 17,000 identified terms are displayed. There's a list of kept terms and a corresponding list of drop terms that are deemed to be insignificant to the analysis. There's a default drop list in SAS contextual analysis, and you can modify it. You can also move terms back and forth between the kept terms list and the drop terms list. Let's look at the kept term problem. You can see the stemming for the term problem, including the two forms it takes and the few rare misspellings that have occurred in the documents. Now let's look at a term map of problem. From the term map, you can see that there are several serious problems reported and also indications of recurring problems. For example, exact problem, similar problem, and ongoing problem. As you see, you can interact with the term map to make it more readable, and you can use the term map to help you understand how the different terms are related to each other in the reports. This can help you refine your terms list. Next, topics are defined as groupings of terms. Now the analysis begins to get a lot more interesting. This is where you really start to see patterns emerging from the unstructured text. First, let's look at the document level sentiment analysis for the topics. Because this is a database of complaints, negative sentiment dominates, always above 80% and often above 90%. Neutral sentiment, surprisingly, manages to register in double digit percentages fairly frequently. On the right side, you can choose from two different views of the terms that constitute the topics and three different views of the documents that are associated with the topics. A few of these topics really jump out at you. For example, transmission, gear, shift, Honda, and mile, and fuel, tank, gas, gauge, and pump. These are potentially disruptive problems. It begins to get even more interesting and potentially more hazardous with topics like engine, fire, oil, leak, and plug and spring, coil, brake, rear, and front. I want to look out for these topics in other documents, and so I want to promote them to be categories. After I highlight the topics, I click on the Add Topic as Category icon to promote the selected topics to be used as categories. In this project, I've already promoted these topics to be categories, so let's move directly to the category screen. Here are the topics that I promoted to be categories. Let's look at the document proportion analysis in the upper portion of the screen. This analysis evaluates how well the displayed linguistic definitions of the categories approximate the underlying machine learning definitions. And this is important because you'll be using the linguistic definitions to score other documents. For true positive, in blue, both definitions identify the document as being in the category. For false positive, in green, only the linguistic definition identifies the document. And for false negative, in red, only the machine learning definition identifies the document. These classifications can help you adjust your linguistic category definitions to better represent the data. When you select a category, you can view and adjust its component rules by using the interface in the lower portion of the screen. You can also use models developed in SAS contextual analysis to score additional text data. You simply open the file di dialog at the top of the screen and choose Score External Data Set. A dialog box appears in which you can identify the textual data that you want to score. Additionally, you can view and export the DS2 macro code used to define concepts, sentiment, and categories for use anywhere you can run SAS. 
That's a quick look at SAS contextual analysis. Thanks for watching.